Hello! Today we are going to have a look at VST hosts and how we can use them in ACID Pro. It's very exciting. Um, now, if you have used ACID for any period of time, I don't know why you would be watching this video if you hadn't. You'd probably be familiar with the fact that some plugins and some instruments, they can be a bit buggy or they don't quite work or they don't work at all or in worst case scenarios they cause acid to crash and you lose you lose lots of work well for the most part it seems like plugins are the cause of those things right especially their instability and uh, it's a real pain and magics aren't getting around to fixing it as quickly as we would like so what we're going to do here is we are going to have a look at two different VST hosts and how we can kind of get around those problems. One of them is free and we like free and the other one isn't free but it's good so we we like that as well. Okay so first off let's have a look at the free version and how we can use that to have better compatibility with VST3 FX plugins, so just audio effects. And this is using a plugin from Waves called Studio Rack, I think it is. Let's have a look. Uh, Waves, yep, Studio Rack. And we actually get a VST2 and a VST3 version of this. Uh, it can only load VST3 plugins, but you can actually use it as a VST2 plugin within ACID. So um, now I've not seen any problems with using the VST3 version, but you know, just as a demo, we'll use the VST2 version. Now, as I say, this is free. If you want to use this, you just need to head over to the Waves website, search their store for Studio Rack, and you need to buy it in quotes that doesn't it actually cost you any money it just assigns it to your account and then you can download the wave central plugin manager which will install it on your pc and it'll automatically be detected next time you start acid right so this is just designed as a thing that you can load other plugins into uh, it was originally designed for waves plugins uh, and if you have a look at this preset menu here, there's loads of options in here, but these are all using Waves plugins, which I don't have, and they're quite expensive. So, um, well, if you want all of them, it's quite expensive. But in a recent version, they added support for VST3 plugins, and if you click on the burger menu, uh, you can come in and, and scan plugins. It will scan your default VST plugin folder. If you've got a custom one, you can scan your custom folder as well. Now, I've already done that, so we don't need to sit through that process. Let's just have a quick look at this interface. So, if you're familiar with Waves along the top, this is where you can like undo, redo, swap between two different uh, like config slots to AB test. And we've got the presets here, and you can save your own presets. Pretty simple. Um, the way this works is any audio coming in from your audio track or your uh, bus where you've got this uh, sitting will come in via this input level knob you can adjust that on invert the phase it will then that uh, audio stream will then work through these plugin slots there's a fader at the bottom for that and then there's yet another fader here so three different ways we can control the, the gain. It's quite useful sometimes to be able to drop the gain down a little bit before we do any effects, especially if your effects are going to be pushing the volume up, so it gives you a bit of headroom and then you can correct the volume uh, before it heads out, which is nice. So uh, the reason I look, found this and why I was kind of looking for a solution is I really like the Killer Hearts plugins. Um, especially the V2 update which came out a few months ago they, they're really good and really powerful but when used in ACID whether we pick the VST2 or VST3 version we 
we have a bug. I'm not sure where the bug lies. Whether it's probably acid, but I don't know. Um, I'm not sure whether it's between acid and killer hearts, but we can't use automation. Uh, it just doesn't work unless the the killer hearts window is open, which is not a workable solution. So there's a known bug that we have, and we're going to work around that by using Studio Rack. So we're going to click here, and we can add in. Uh, VST plugin. Uh, we're going to use Snap Heap, and I've got a little plugin preset here, just like a DJ filter. Got low, medium, and high pass. And Snap Heap is great because it allows me to adjust response curves for these things, so they more uh, accurately map the kind of response curve you get on an actual DJ. Uh, console which uh, very few plugins actually allow you to do so I'm really happy that uh, snap people does that so what I want in acid is I want to have these three uh, macros mapped into acid and normally in acid, in acid we would come in and just map them uh, in the pl audio plugin window but because we're using a separate host we have to do that like twice so we have to map additional macros in studio rack so it's pretty simple just uh, map a button to an exist like one of the snap heap controls so we have low medium and high uh, another thing we can do in here is we can edit uh, the control ranges so it doesn't allow us to adjust the control curve exactly but we can uh, adjust the control range of the the specific effect but then also of like how much we can we can spin the macro knob so to speak or the envelope in acid so that's also really nice something we can't do in acid currently so now we've got this macro set up I can come in here and enable the, oh, those three macros and we now have those there and we can see that they're affecting our macro in uh, in the studio rack and if we open a snap peep we should see it's also affecting the, the high macro there uh, and that's something that uh, didn't work doesn't work natively if you can see snap peep within acid so that's great so there's probably lots of other like little quirks when using VST3 plugins and stability I think stability is the issue here uh, when using those plugins because you're not loading the plugins you're not letting acid deal with the plugin management anymore and in fact you don't need to have snap peep even in acid so you don't need to point acid at the folder where your plugins are installed all you need is uh, assuming you're only using VST3 plugins all you need is the studio rack plugin and then all of the, the memory management and processing management is done within the studio rack. As I say, I've not seen any problems with this yet. It just works really nicely and it's free. So um, what else can we do with this? Well, um, as well as adding plugins here, we can actually do a parallel split or multi-band split. So with a parallel split, we can, we can split the the uh, the signal into uh, left right mid or side and we can uh, uh, affect each of those separately which is nice if you wanted to um, you know I don't know maybe you wanted to put a reverb on the on the side channel but not on the mid not something I actually use very often but it's nice that we have the option and then a multi-band split is actually incredibly powerful so we can add additional bands and we can see here we have the the band crossover for each of these and then we can not only can we add eight plugins per band but we can also do some little some controls with this here so for example a common thing you might want to do is to reduce the stereo width of your bass channel or your bass frequencies and we can do that in here so uh, below 90, I'm not sure where the 92 is exactly where you want to hit, but we'll stick with that. 
by dragging the W button we can drop that down to 0% and now we have no width on our, on our base frequencies. Uh, you might, for example, you might want to um, add a, a co another common thing you might want to do is you have a reverb send uh, and then you want to do a bass cut on that. Well, we could do we could achieve the same result here by not having a send, but uh, rather putting our reverb on a multiband split. So we'll only put a reverb above 545 hertz in this instance. So it's pretty powerful what you can do with this, and it's all within that same plugin host. Really cool. I would recommend everybody to go and get it because it's just free and works. Okay, so that's audio effects. The second thing we want to look at is MIDI. Unfortunately, Studio Act doesn't support MIDI, so uh, and this is probably where there's like the second amount of uh, c current complaints are going to uh, regarding Acid. It's uh, virtual synth compatibility, and it's not great at the minute. There's a uh, some big hitters in terms of uh, synths and plugins that just don't work and uh, one of those is Reason uh, which I have so let's have a look at what happens in Reason when we try and use it natively so if we change this synth to Reason rack plugin and it, it, like, it all loads fine and we've got some MIDI notes here, which uh, let's mute that. It doesn't make a sound at the minute because we don't actually have an instrument loaded. So if we load the the bass synthesizer, we can see the MIDI signal going through out of this channel. We don't see it coming in here. Well, this is actually not a MIDI signal anyway. This is a volume, but we don't see. Mm, uh, I think we would see MIDI in here. It just doesn't work anyway, we don't get any sounds. And uh, the whole thing just is a bit rubbish. Um, and Reason is incredibly powerful. You know, there's lots of other incredibly powerful tools out there that also don't work. And at one point, um, I have the Arturi pigments, and the VST2 version worked fine, but the VST3 version didn't work at all. Um, I'm sure if you're watching this video, you probably have another plugin in mind which also doesn't work. So we are going to get that working using another VST host, and this time we're going to use Super Plugin by DDMF. Now let's just have a look at because this is a paid plugin. This is a DDMF website. Uh, there are lots of plugins here and they're all really well regarded there a decent developer and they have two plugins that we care about here called meta plugin and super plugin is one we're going to use and these are essentially the same thing like they're under the hood they do exactly the same thing um, uh, and meta plugin allows you to be really complicated with your uh, audio flow diagrams and you can set up ind individual plugins that under frequency splits and all kinds of crazy stuff but it's a bit it's not from a workflow point of view it's a bit slow and fiddly to go and set those things up so um, whereas super plugin which will load does the same thing but it's a lot quicker you don't have to go and manually connect things up so we have a flow diagram here which it just follows so we have and each one of these boxes we can load a plugin into so we have our input uh, in this instance uh, it's going to be MIDI but we could use this as an audio effect as well so it works the same way as uh, the rack uh, and we have a flow and it comes through these four boxes and into a frequency splitter and then we get four uh, slots per frequency band uh, and then some additional controls there and then a more f another four boxes for loading plugins into and then the output now with MIDI we could load a, a virtual synth into each one of these but the, si the audio signal isn't mixed 
So that's the important thing to note here. Um, now you could use the frequency split to load a plugin into each one of these boxes and then you would get a uh, the, the virtual synth would run and then essentially the audio frequency is split. So that might be quite nice if you want to create a, a sub frequencies in one synth and uh, you know everything else in another synth. If you have a synth which is feeling a bit uh, empty or devoid of a sub then that, that's something you could do. Um, uh, but we aren't going to do that right now. What we're going to do is we want to get Reason working. So let's have a look. We'll load Reason. And in here, um, again, you need to come into the options and just uh, point Super Plugin at your VST and VST3 th folder locations uh, and then do a scan. So very similar. Uh, we will add in the plugin, not the plugin effect. And then we double click it, we open and we can load our bass synth and now we have some notes. That's amazing. Um, but the other thing, I mean the, the power of reason is in the fact that this is a itself another rack and we can chain effects together so we can come in here and use something like the baseline generator and then add our uh, bass synth onto that and now we have we have reason creating a I don't know if it's cool but a baseline Uh, so that's fat, uh, and then of course I think we can add in non-VSTIs in here, let's see. Yeah, we should be able to do that, so we can come in and add in snap heap, or maybe not snap heap, we don't need something like that, but we could add in a delay from kilohertz. Now if we hit play, we're getting the delay. Right, or maybe as I was saying earlier, we might not want that to affect the whole signal. We just want that to affect everything above 200 hertz, for example. Then we can just drag that into this slot and then just adjust the um, frequency crossover, free, the crossover frequency, <laughs> rather. Um, and now we'll get a delay just on everything above 200 hertz probably not that easy to tell just on a YouTube video but you know that's the kind of thing you can do in here and it again it just works so the other benefit of what we can do here that we can't do in studio rack is uh, do oversampling again something that magix acid doesn't support natively so we have two options at the top for real-time oversampling and we can go up to 16 and then we get offline oversampling so this is when you render your project out um, we can do that if we want I don't many uh, the things I've tested don't work with 16 oversampling well that's, that seems fine um, but uh, just be wary of that and obviously there's a CPU impact for the more oversampling that you do Now I have noticed the UI is a bit laggy when using both of these uh, solutions. It seems more laggy in Super Plugin than it does in in the rack. So that's just something to be mindful of. You'll notice I notice as I'm dragging, like this knob isn't updating very quickly. Um, but anyway, that's that. There's a couple of VST hosts. There are others available, especially for the MIDI uh, side of things, and they also aren't free. So um, uh, I've not tried those out. This this one just seems to work for me, so I'm not sure why I would try another. But um, yeah, hopefully you found that useful. Or maybe you've just had a, a eureka moment. Finally, I can use Reason within Acid. Um, but yeah, let me know if that's been useful, if you've got any questions about it, and I will see you in the next one.